New York City is always rebuilding itself. With the city constantly changing, it's hard to remember what used to exist here. This is the story of our forgotten past. When the Dutch first came, the area was obviously undeveloped, but there were areas of marshes, lush fertile fields, and several wooded areas. It was hilly um, at different parts of the island. Uh, there were streams running across it. A number of springs that fed uh, different bodies of water, the largest of which was uh, the Collect Pond. Collect Pond stretched between today's Canal, Worth, Mulberry, and Lafayette streets. This large pond covered 48 acres and had a depth of over 70 feet. It was filled with fresh water that came from underground springs. Two streams carried the water out of the collect. Wreck Brook flowed to the East River by cutting across the Lower East Side. The Northern Stream flowed across the line of today's Canal Street and emptied into the Hudson River. There is rumored to have been Native American sites in and around the area. The pond is not far from modern day Broadway, which is a Native American trail. Broadway was certainly a main artery that cut through Manhattan Island all the way from the southern part to the north. The pond was used by Native Americans, according to the records, as a uh, food resource. It was a place where Native Americans that lived nearby regularly, you know, uh, gathered shellfish and, and ate. So when the Dutch stumbled across it, they found this isthmus strewn with large shells, um, and they called it something like Kalchuk Pond, which became anglicized, I believe, to, to Collect Pond. Collect Pond first became important to New Yorkers as a place for recreation. There are accounts of the pond being used uh, for recreation, for boating, uh, for ice skating in the winter when the water froze over. Fishing became very popular at Collect Pond. For over a hundred years, New Yorkers caught perch, sunfish, and trout without any restrictions. There were regulations that were passed towards the end of its time when it was still uh, a freshwater pond that limited the number of fish and the method you could obtain fish from it because it was getting overfished quickly. New York's population exploded from a couple hundred colonists to over 10,000 residents in the early 1700s and they all needed fresh water to drink. The water was drawn from wells, the most famous of which was something called the Tea Water Well. And these were wells that were sunk to the aquifer and they, they pumped water out and New Yorkers would haul by, by wagon barrels of water. Uh, that was their, their water supply. As the population grew, the wells became overwhelmed by the large need for water. The city council looked north to collect pond for a solution. They did use it as a source of fresh water, and they used it even into the 19th century when some of the early water companies began to lay water lines, um, one being the Manhattan Water Company. They would access water from the pond to pump to people's homes. As the city limits moved northward, so did its least desirable industries. Yes, the, the history of Collect Pond uh, shows how quickly a natural resource can be degraded. When the settlement was uh, initially New Amsterdam, most of the city was confined below Wall Street. And above that were located these, what you would call today, noxious industries, um, slaughterhouses, tanneries, breweries. There was quite a lot of runoff from the tanneries. You would have carcasses, bone, liquid items such as blood that would actually all run off into the area of the pond. So it quickly became an area where they were using the water for their industry, but it also became a very easy dumping ground. And there are some historic accounts that mention the stench of the pond from the excess of industry and the dumping that would go into it. In a period of less than 50 years, the pond became so polluted by the dead bodies of animals that it caused outbreaks of cholera and typhus in the city. The water from, that was coming from the collect that was being pumped by the Manhattan Water Company in the 19th century was described as brackish, and certainly not clean water as we would think of today. The pond and its rivers were also standing in the way of the physical expansion of the city. Sometime during the Revolutionary War, 
the British built a bridge over the northern stream to connect New York City with the rest of Manhattan. After the war, it became known as the Kissing Bridge. It was called the Kissing Bridge apparently because uh, it was considered a romantic twisting spot. On Sundays, couples would take a stroll or a carriage ride uh, up Broadway and across the, uh, across the Kissing Bridge and would, I guess, presumably linger there to, um, to kiss. While New Yorkers were enjoying the quiet and natural scenery at the Kissing Bridge, the fate of Collect Pond and its rivers were being debated by the city council. It was 1802, and the pond was considered both a health hazard and an obstacle to expansion. One idea was to turn Collect Pond into a park, but the pond was thought to be too polluted to save without endangering the public health. After almost a year of debate, the city council came to its conclusion. There is no doubt that the health of the city in a few years will require Collect Pond to be filled up with pure earth. In order to be done immediately while there is still high ground in its neighborhood. City Council, October 18th, 1802. It was um, put forth by the City Council to fill the pond and to create the land. Landfill at Collect Pond was performed using labor between roughly 1803 to 1811. They used uh, manual tools. It was done by cart, dray, and horse. They leveled, I think, three hills that were they surrounded the Collect Pond and uh, over the course of those eight years transferred the, the, the tops of those hills into the pond itself. After eight years, Collect Pond was obliterated off the map and new streets were laid in its place. It would take years before anyone realized that the landfill job was poorly done. The landfill job was considered poorly done in retrospect because the, the springs weren't, weren't adequately sealed. It was filled in by 1811 and housing constructed there, middle, middle class housing initially. It turned into the five points when the buildings began to subside into the, into the swampy land and it became clear that draining the swamp had not gotten rid of all of the, uh, the noxious stuff that had been dumped into it. Once the middle class fled the initial housing uh, there, uh, and the poor people moved in, it became a slum, America's first slum, the Five Points. The Five Points existed until the opening of the 20th century. Today, the site of Collect Pond is shared by Chinatown and the city's courts. It's been 200 years since Collect Pond disappeared but not all reminders of it have been paved over with concrete and forgotten. The canal was, um, where Canal Street is now, was a, a deepening of a naturally occurring stream that uh, initially had drained the pond naturally. When the um, decision was made to, to drain the pond itself, the, the stream was, was deepened and lined with stone and became a canal to drain uh, the water from the pond out. Well, there's, you know, there's a park that is named after it, which is um, essentially the center of the, pretty much the center of, of the old pond. The park has a number of problems with um, uh, the soil subsiding, and it's thought that, you know, this is because the springs are beneath that and, and uh, the land keeps falling, collapsing there. Collect Pond was once important and vital to New York City. We tried to erase it in the name of progress, but nature always finds a way to come back.